Shut up and sit down. Hello, gang. Colin here, Festa 67's workshop. And we are going to be building the Ravel BMW Isetta 250 bubble car. Yeah, <clears throat> with a slight difference. So we'll have a little looky loo at the old destructions. Got all your paint call outs and everything there. Not a lot to this kit. So we'll go through the instructions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build most of this off camera. So I shall do the engine assembly together with the chassis. With all the seats on as one assembly. Then do the suspension components. Drop this unit in on the back for the engine supports. The interior then will be its own assembly and then do the body, the wheels etc. Just so that I can get them primed and then I can go back and paint them. So the actual gluing together I shall do off camera. And then it will come together then once uh, primers on and, and the first few coats of paint are on. So we'll go into the spray booth you'll see the priming's of it and then uh, some of the colour will go down and then we'll get back into the detail work of the engine assembly and things like that. So it's not a massive amount to the car, you can do it out of the box, very rather fetching blue colour there, but me being me, I ain't going to do that. So when we come back we'll have some of the sections already built and they'll go into the spray booth and be primed. So I will see you at the spray booth. Bye bye for now. Right, we'll just give these a prime. These are the sub assemblies that I was on about. So you've got the steering wheel, uh, the wheel hubs on the sprues, the side cover, interior and bits and bobs. And I'm just giving these a, a skim over with a bit of UMP primer neat in the airbrush. And I'm spraying this at about 18, 18, 20 psi, there or thereabouts. And I'm just misting over bits and bobs and there, uh, and then I'll go back over and give them a second coat. So this is sped up footage, but hey ho, you know, a few of you have asked about uh, my spray booth set up and that so I thought I would include it in this episode and I'm just spiralling around the bits and bobs just getting the paint where I want it to go um, this is the suspension components I'll just quickly clean my nozzle and then we'll give these all a scoot over as you can see the inside of the side panel any of the shut areas get a coat of primer and then the top surface gets a few bits and bobs as well. So this will all add probably two, maybe three coats of primer because I'm doing a decal wrap on it. And after the primer it will have a, a clear coat to aid the decal going down. Uh, the wheels will be sprayed up, they'll be sprayed a blue colour. Um, yeah, so probably spray the uh, blue down once the primer's dry so I'll probably do that off camera because uh, it's the same process just me in the spray booth so just have uh, just, just the roof and the wheels that's the only paint that's going on the kit uh, everything else is going to be done with a hairy stick uh, interior wise the underside will be misted over with a bit of flat black but for the moment let's just get the primer down and then we can go over bits and bobs how we see fit but as you can see it builds up into a nice little nice little car to be quite honest with you it's surprising how compact they were <coughs> excuse me but yeah quite a compact little engine set up in there but uh, yeah very interesting little car I must admit nice little kit to do so I would say to any of you, if you get an opportunity to grab one, it is grab one because I think they were an iconic little car. I mean, 
there might be some of you out there that have never come across the bubble cars. There was the BMW I sat at, and there was also the little tiny Messerschmitt bubble car, which looked like the cockpit of the Messerschmitt airplane. And yeah, you used to see quite a few of them about at one time. I don't know whether they got uh, emissioned out of existence. I don't know. I can't remember whether there was a little two-stroke in there or not, but with all the modern emission laws and car safety laws I can imagine you couldn't drive them now I don't know it's one of them there's so many regulations now on vehicles that I lose track let's give the inside of the driver's uh, door a larrapin do all the door shuts first old habits die hard <laughs> but yeah I tend to do any of the uh, swage lines door shuts and things like that and then mist over everything else and that then gives you a nice a nice coat of primer I'll just quickly give that a, a clean and then we can grab the rest of it and do the uh, interior seating area underside of the wheel arches and give that a prime Around, around the engine compartment and rear wheel arches and then come round and do the internal rails and, and bits and bobs and it's right in one of those I fondly remember going round tooting in my uncle's little bubble car and uh, yeah quirky little experience that was scary because <laughs> they were little but uh, yeah I don't know, I mean, I suppose the modern equivalent would be something like a G-Wiz, but a bubble car was smaller than that, from what I remember. So let's give the floor a, a going over. Probably flock that when it comes to uh, doing the interior. Because it's rude not to, in it? It's a bubble car. And then do the inside of the body shell with a bit of primer ready for that to have its internal colour done and yeah just go over that like so do the roof pillars and then completely prime the whole shell a lot of people would say well why are you priming it putting a decal over it just gives the primer something to bite onto the plastic and then when it's had a clear coat, the glide, the decal will bind to that. It's just force of habit. Been on paint in the top. It's, yeah. Just was worried about getting a different uh, colour effect at the bottom there if I didn't prime it. So sometimes the white you can get a bit of snow blindness with it. So I'm nearly finished on this. I just scoop round there. And then shall we put some decals on folks why not so let's just grab me a packet of decals and pull them out and yeah you can finally get it it's a bubble car and I support West Ham and their theme tune is on forever blowing bubbles which for me just ties in with doing the bubble car so yeah the theme of the bubble car is going to be claret and blue so the claret is obviously the decals at the bottom of the car and the blue is the top of the roof as you can see it's at its blue paint on there and everything has had a gloss coat and we're ready to start putting some decals on and I'm gonna be using me ultimate decal solutions I've got a bowl of water just off to me right that I'm soaking the decals in and the ultimate solutions you have a bottle of normal strong and extra strong so I'm just gonna go over it with the normal and give that a good old sloshing across the front edge there like so trying to get it into all the door shuts and everything else um, 
so that when I start placing the decal it will almost suck itself into those little areas it will wrinkle up at first when you first put it on as well because obviously I'm putting a a flat decal on a quite a, a variable set of compound curves on these panels so it will wrinkle up in a few places and you might then go oh no it's wrecked don't worry persevere with it carry on watching this little bit and you'll see how I get it to, to start forming now a lot of people go on I'm brutal with me decals but these are ones that I printed myself and they've had three coats of plastic oak clear sealer on there so it toughens them right up purely and simply I do it that way because then I can pull on the decal and stretch it and then as it shrinks back it will then suck in and conform to the compound curves that I want so you'll see what I mean as I start getting this to conform I will sort of be pulling at it and thumbing right across it and it goes against everything you learn about decals where you have to be so delicate but on these ones as you can see I can be pretty brutal I'll give that a good old stretch into that corner and there you go so it pulls that wrinkle right out and then run your thumb around the swage line on the front and then where it's got the writing at the bottom you can see it's all sort of consulted is just stretch that out bit by bit and the middle part is my focus at the moment the edges I'm not too worried about I can get them to conform in a minute and every now and then just wet the decal as well and uh, it will keep it doing what you want so now I can go over it with me thumbs shock horror yes I'm using me thumbs and not a brush purely because I can feel under the tips of me thumbs any wrinkles so then I'm easing them out to areas where I can lose them so to speak be it in a swage line or on the top edge and then you can go back in with your brush and move the wrinkle around until it's less of a wrinkle so to speak and then you can put the strong and extra strong fluids on then and then it will bite them into the shape you want so I'll just give this another wetting because I try to keep it it wet as best as I can whilst I'm doing this but yeah it's surprising how quick it starts to take shape and then like you say you can see it now beginning to conform to that curved swage line and now I can start figuring out the best way of getting rid of these creases and it's just literally lose them in the corner gather them in the corner and then stretch the corner out over the panel and it will pull all them wrinkles over the edge and then it will shrink back and boom suddenly you've got a decal that is conforming to a multiple compound curve and this is how I do the racing bikes, the decals on the front of the fairings. And I run a cotton bud over it or roll it over it. And I'm just going to start moving some of the creases out with the tip of my blade now. Like so. I'll just put a bit of decal solution under there because I know that's going to gather and creases will form there. And then when I put the the strong and extra strong in it's going to melt them down quite nicely there's a little crease just forming there so let's just flick that edge back over like so and see whether I can nudge that crease just towards that top edge a bit and then my theory is is when I run the brush over that little edge it will pop it forward so I just need to have a little little looky low as to where it is and then we can uh, manipulate that crease out of the way like that see now I've seen that it's where I wanted it to be at the top I can just thumb it over the edges and then I can start working these ones over now see and it's just lift stretch thumb it move it then you do another lift 
then you do another stretch and you're chasing the creases all the way that along the, the edges of the, the panel see and then you just get your blade and give the decal just a little bit of persuasion re-wet it like so and look at that the creases go see? and you wouldn't think it would do it like that but it does it works a treat I've been wrapping models now for oh, blimey as long as I can remember so we'll do the same with this side and start pulling them creases out of the way it can be a bit repetitive this stage and you sort of think oh it's three times I've lifted it now just keep with it because this stage is quite important because you only get one crack at it and there's going to be a big old crease along there so I need to figure out how I'm going to get shot of that one now so I'll probably try to pull the edge along and up towards the top of the blue part of the car and then I'll just lift and pull the decal over that corner and it should stretch it like a drum skin then that's the theory I mean that one's creeping in quite nicely and the aim is is that I'll have the two little bubbles in each corner see that's the aim yeah so it's just getting there I can see just that one crease there so let's start stretching it along moving it to the edge like so lift tug give it a, a rub with your thumb and then lift and tug same again a bit more happy days and then you're going to end up with a couple of cat's ears poking out down the bottom there don't worry about them yet because you can get a sanding stick and you can run it round the edge of the panel and it will cut the decal as you sand over the edge it will just abrade the decal enough for you to run your thumb along and the decal will just roll straight off where that thumb line is so happy days thumbs up time so we'll put the lid on the decal set and we'll go for a bit of the strong now and start getting the decal to to warm up and do its thing and start going into all of these little edges now and it's not that much that this solution has to do now because we've done its hard work but what this will do is this will just wrinkle up the decal a tad and it, it almost melts it a little bit but if there are any minor imperfections then this is where the solutions come into their own because they can get the little bits that you can't quite get and it also enables you to fold the decals over like I'm doing with a brush tip over the panel edges and then all I'll do is like I said I'll go around them with a sanding stick later but for the moment I just want them to fold over the edges so I can see that the decal is how I want it to be and I mean in that sort of five ten minute period you've you've done the bulk of the work there see I do with a full it eh? a flat decal in one piece over the whole front of that yeah I'm liking it I'm liking it a lot also helps that you know it is you know the pride of London in it at the end of the day it's the happy hammers mate oh yeah it was funny when I was building this uh, car I've had it for a while and I've got the 116th Samba bus as well and a lot of people were like what are you gonna do with them what are you gonna do with them and I I was going to do the uh, Samba as like a drive-in sort of theatre movie or whatever, you know, or a, something like that, you know, like a man bus where you can all sit and, and have a beer and, and do your thing. And I couldn't quite think what to do with a bubble car. 
and uh, it just popped into my head about the football and it was like yeah that'll do so whether or not I then now do the Samba bus in the same scheme and have it as uh, all the blokes watching the football in, in on a big flat panel telly in the bus I don't know I haven't haven't decided yet it's one of those 16 window Samba buses and uh, yeah I'm keep thinking of things and different ideas for the bus and it keeps changing so but anyway that is the front of the car dump and I think being that that went so well should we uh, have a little looky look at perhaps doing one of the, one of the sides so I should do one of the sides on, on film uh, for now uh, get that done and that should then wrap this episode up because with them drying I'll do the other side once this side is dried because otherwise I'm going to be catching decals and I don't want to do that so let's get this side of the car done and I'm going to try and get the badge or the club crest round about the centre where that rectangular door handle is so that everything then just drops in place so identical pictures so I'll try and get as many of the bubbles on the car as I can but like I say you know I think the concept is there it's a bubble car so yeah so we'll get them in place and I'm roughly aiming about there for it so again this is gonna be quite a challenge to get that one piece decal to conform to all these different contours of the car but it can be done using the free solutions and that's the key for me with these decals is using the free solutions on it works well for me I must admit and because I toughen them up a lot with the plastic coat they can be a bit stubborn and just having that bottle of extra strong enables me to go in and, and do that little bit extra with them so I thoroughly recommend that set if you're printing your own decals it, it comes in handy so this should start sliding off the backing paper now and as you can see it's quite a, quite a, a thick old decal and it, it's as tough as old boots so I will put that in place and start giving it a, a move around and try to get it to slide off the decal paper as smoothly as possible but again if it does crease don't worry because you can lift this as many times as you want and move it about so just try to give it a stretch get as much of it to stay on at the top as I can and then I'm going to pull underneath and slide that out like so and as you can see most of the decal will then suck straight down into place and then you can look at it and go right where's the bulk of the problems going to be and for me it's going to be that front wheel arch so I'm going to line up with where the chrome strips going to be at the swage line between the blue and the claret and then we'll start stretching that little piece over its aris like that and I'm just going to bung that down for the minute just to hold it roughly in place and we can then have a little looky loo and see what we're doing I know I keep wandering off shot I do apologise but I've got my OptiVisor on and I'm just trying to see what I'm doing so I'll try and keep on shot as much as I possibly can but I'll describe what I'm doing as I'm doing it as well just to help you guys out but I do apologise like I say for keep going off shot but hopefully we can resolve that when I get my new glasses so yeah. so I'm just literally doing the same as what I did with the front lift, pull, place back down in place and then I'll start brushing out creases in a minute as we start seeing how this decal is going to lie but this is the 
the fettling stage of the process. Uh, I thoroughly recommend you all, all try this. If you've got inkjet printers and, and you know a bit of decal paper and you want to have a go, give it a go. So I'm just going to, uh, <coughs> pardon me, just brush a bit more uh, decal solution on there just to start getting it, it where I want. And this is that fettling stage now. Just lift it up. Get the creases to start moving where you want them to be. And then just run your thumbs along places. Just to start getting out the bulk of the problem areas. And I'll probably run a blade around the wheel arches at some point. Just to relieve some of the tension under there. But the focus at the moment is the middle area where the badge is because that's the main focus that people's eyes are going to be drawn to so you want that right so let's just take a bit of pressure now out of there just by running a knife line along and it will let me just pivot that top edge then like so and I'll start lining that up with a swage line and pulling the creases up to a straight edge basically is what I'm trying to do there work that one out like so just keep running along with your thumb and there's a swage line that goes right the way along the side of the car there and as you can see I'm really going to the tent of the dozen on it to get that decal to lay down in it I think and it's beginning to conform to most of the bulbous shapes on there probably do the same on the rear wheel arch in a minute and run the knife along there and get that uh, and then just run my knife along that wheel arch like so take off some of the pressure under there just like that and use the edge of the car just to get that pull down and just put that on that backing paper for now in case I need any bits of it and then I can now start just fanning out with a brush over them leading edges like that now don't forget there's going to there's going to be a decal that goes on the back of this that is going to cover the boot area so what I'm going to do with this decal is slightly overlap the panel line of the boot and then I'll be removing any excess with the knife then, because I won't need the big pig ear down the side there because there's going to be a, a single flat decal going across the back with a slightly different design on it so I can run the blade down that line and lose the bulk of that decal in that panel line because the back decal is going to overlap that the other way so it'll just be a fraction bigger so you can lose the seam uh, around there because there's a frame to go on the back with a big case on it as well so yeah. but it just gives the back a little bit of character as well and then I can start pulling this back down now with uh, my thumb where it started to shrink and uh, regain my line along the back wheel arch then. so it's beginning to take shape so I can just take a bit more tension now out of this front by getting closer to the wheel arch just taking out any areas that are creating too much tension I mean neatening up at the end will be done with a sanding stick along the edge once the decals dry the tad but for now just a knife just to get rid of them off cuts and then I keep the little bits just there in case you do get any areas that tear you can then try and blend in with a, another piece on top just to try to recapture the colour that you're after and then start folding over that middle piece and then smooth in, a, in nice long strokes with your brush along the panel grabbing any little wrinkles with your thumb and you're dragging them then to an edge where there's no decal that you can lose any air bubbles or wrinkles into and it is beginning to take shape 
very fiddly little process but it's well worth it and I've got Dave into it my uh, silverback sidekick that uh, I do the Sunday brunch shows for over on my channel um, he's now decal wrapping it was something he was looking at learning to do and got him set up with the printer and the decal paper and settings and, and all of that lot and uh, he's done a similar ter similar transit van wrap to what I did on mine. He's got a nice little World War uh, II memorial uh, for Remembrance Day van, and it's come up really well. And it was his first foray into decal wrapping, and uh, he thoroughly enjoyed it. And he's he's carrying on doing bits and bobs, so. It does work folks, it's just a bit of perseverance when you first start doing it. And uh, I've got a tutorial on this process uh, which is the uh, Festival Workshop transit van I did which is a miniature uh, workbench man cave set up in the transit and it's Fester in the van building the van. It's, yeah, it's one of those little quirky pieces that I did quite a while back actually 2016 but in there I go through the, the Photoshop laying out of the decals and, and how you go about designing them and applying them what products I use on that and uh, yeah so if you want to uh, entertain yourselves and have a little looky loo pop over and uh, have a look in the tutorial section and you'll see it so we'll just bring that decal over the front frame now and start dabbing it in place around the contours of that front uh, wheel arch bubble and uh, we can start then stretching it a bit because I need to put quite a bit of pressure on it here because there's a nice big chunky wrinkle around the door hinge and I'm going to cut around the door hinge anyway and I've got a headlight going on so I'm not too fussed if that wrinkle stays there because the headlight's got to go on and it will hide it so a bit of luck I'll get it out but again not in the back of my mind if I can lose it in an obscure place then I will but it seems to be going down anyway so we might be lucky and not have to do that but we'll see just bring that one back up to the swage line there and start fanning it across there like so and then really start putting a bit of pressure on the brush now just to stretch that over where that little dimple is is where the headlight is going to go see so I've got a, now a rough idea of where I can lose it and I'll just go back along that swage line just to make sure that that's sinking how we want I'll probably go over this with a bit of the old extra strong and that will uh, be left then because I tend not to do brushing too much when the extra strong's on there because it's extra strong for a reason because it really attacks the decal so that's when you start getting mistakes happening if you've got the sole equivalent so to speak on there you know it can it can make the decal tear if you're not careful so try not to be too brutal once you put the the stronger solutions on so we can now see roughly where we're going to have a lot of overhang so I shall trim that back shortly I just want to fold that up under there out of the way for a minute and see what this front frame wheel arch area is going to look like stretch that round the frame and it should then with a deft bit of fummage pull that wrinkle right out and loosen it right down that seam there just like that and just come up reapply a little bit of fummage on there to get rid of that one and we have now got that flat decal 
not starting it's conforming to all of these different curves folks see and you've got to admit from what we started with to what we've ended up with is I think pretty nice so don't get me wrong you know it's not everyone's favorite football team don't get me wrong but you could imagine doing one of these with your team colors on there couldn't you folks I think I know someone out there who likes red Oh, I wonder who that is who, who would probably be thinking of doing one of these now with his club crest on it but yeah. but bubble car is West Ham in it because they're forever blowing bubbles but yeah. when I come through the back I'll have to remove that rear number plate as well because the decal is going to go right, right right through there so in case you wondered what the white rectangles were on the front it's because I popped the number plates back off because yeah I glued them on before I uh, thought I got ahead of myself so we can now work on this back end just around where the rear light cluster is just to try to get that to conform a bit better Not too worried about the uh, inner edge near the number plate because that's getting covered by the next decal but just try and get as much of the wrinklage out around there and then I can cut off the excess of the side decal and it's just beginning to conform now around there there's quite a, a bulbous shape just use the knife just to get that to start laying down in a few places I might ping the blade through in a minute where the the uh, rear bulb uh, lens cover attaches just to take the air bubble out so we'll just pop the blade through and pop that like so and that will then let that start sinking down into that area like so And it is, look at that, hey. Oh, yeah. I think that's looking mint. So we're now ready for the the super strong. This is the extra strong solution now that's going on. And this is the one that's really going to get the decal to sink down into all the door shut, panel lines, panel joins, swage lines, everywhere it's really going to work this decal into a a very flimsy state so long brush strokes along the leading edges that I want and then uh, it's just going to be very uh, very fine fetalage going on perhaps the odd, the odd bit of fumage but nothing too mad and I should then be able to lay this spare piece along the bottom edge now of the door opening. This is why I keep these bits. See, and I should do this half, and then when I do the other side, I'll have another piece that will come along from the other side and overlap this in the middle. But it comes in handy keeping these little overhang bits because you can continue to the design along using off cuts so, and it'll just fold under and over and it'll just give that a little bit of uh, a paint effect as well or a decal wrap along that leading edge because don't forget this front door opens so you want to make sure that if it you know is open you can see bits and pieces I mean yeah you've got the bumpers going on over it as well I know but I hate, we know it's there so all in all I think this is coming along quite nicely folks so we'll be wrapping this episode up shortly uh, and leaving it at this stage for now uh, the next episode I shall do the other half and uh, get that all on on the back decal and then it will be ready for its gloss coat then because I shall then 
once everything's dried and conformed I shall take the car outside and I shall spray the whole car with probably two or three more coats of plastic coat clear sealer just to bond everything and blend uh, the gloss of the decal into the gloss of the roof so uh, yeah so we'll have a couple of coats of that and I think then we can start figuring out then building the rest of the car so it'll be quite a quite a nice little car when it's done I think I just want to grab that little edge there and get that in place make sure that that's bedded down like that and probably have a go at them with a sanding stick just to clean them up I might be lucky and be able to do it now but I'll think about it see how the extra strong's doing it let's have a look and see how it behaves uh, just make sure and you, on, you're only gently caressing the, the edge about a 45 degree angle over the edges and it'll just roll that decal off like that so, so I'll try and capture it a bit better on camera for you if I can it's just I need to be able to see what I'm doing myself so I'm just running it along the edges of the body shell just to knock off them edges so that as this shrinks back you end up with a nice crisp finish so yeah, happy days. We've got ourselves a body shield, see? Just run it along very gently along them edges and you'll see a white line start to form as you're cutting the decal with a sanding stick. Right. And it just pops it straight off like that. That's the top tip. So we're going to wrap this episode up anyway so before we go I'd like to say thanks to everyone for watching uh, thank you to all my patrons for their support if you'd like to support me on Patreon feel free to do so there's no obligation tiers are as low as one dollar there's a one dollar a five dollar and a ten dollar a month um, there are patron hangouts once a month for the patrons uh, on a sat the last Saturday of every month. So until then, bye-bye for now.